Hello everybody, Kimo Sabe coming at you with another video. This one's off webpage slate, read up by Alan Ledovitz. And so he's saying streaming services have a conspiracy problem, but the answer isn't for Netflix and Amazon Prime to just remove the terrible documentaries. Published on May 3rd, 2018. Here's a little picture. So on the afternoon of May 10th, the First Amendment Center, Future 10th, the New America's Education Policy Program, and an Open Technology Institute will host Fact or Fiction. What will it take to combat misinformation and disinformation in the digital age? In Washington, D.C., for more information to RSVP, visit the New America website. As you read these words, the most powerful minds are unwittingly perfecting distribution systems for weapons of mass destruction, unaware of the disastrous consequences. They plan new ways to maximize their reach, exposing men, women, and children to high-tech versions of contagious viruses. Don't believe me. If you have Amazon, you can watch these viruses squirming in their petri dish, eager to be released. Type vaccines into Prime Video. You won't just get one result. You'll be able to choose from shoot 'em up. The truth about vaccines. We don't vaccinate. Vaxed. From cover-up to catastrophe, and the greater good among many, many any others. Were someone putting on a film fest in hopes of sparking a vaccine-preventable epidemic, this is the list of movies they'd screen. And what better vector for distributing misinformation than Amazon, which has spread into nearly 50% of, of American households? With Amazon Prime, you don't even have to pay extra to watch them. Allowing these films on their platform is a draw-dropping beach of ethics and security. A craven decision to put lies at risk for the sake of clicks. Although the misinformation in these films is incredibly dangerous, the real weapon of mass destruction is the rhetoric that makes their message persuasive. All the music time tested cocktail of anti elitism and half truth that's as effective as it is formalic, the conspiracy theory. The constitute elements are simple. Identify a powerful villain, in this case Big Pharma. Connect that villain to traditional sources of authority, the academy, the media, the government. Portray them as hopelessly compromised. Exaggerate genuine problems. Some people are corrupted by money. Into exaggerant paranoia, everyone is corrupted by money. Divide the world into cowardly sheeple and courageous truth seekers. Ask the audience which side they want to be on. Offer up a secret salvic knowledge. Rinse, repeat. When it comes to conspiracy documentaries and streaming platforms, anti vaccine films are only at the tip of the needle. On Amazon Prime, there's also Alex Jones exposed of the New World Order, Endgame, as well as other Jones films like Police State 2, The Takeover Police State 3, Total Enslavement and The Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA, which abandons Roman numerals presumably because they are tied to a totarian empire once bent on world domination for some reason Police State 2000, the first film in the Tearology is not on Prime. Making watchers start in the middle of the series is just rude. If you want to go old school, you can check out the September 11th conspiracy classic Zeitgeist and its follow-up Zeitgeist Adenum and Zeitgeist moving forward. Once you've watched one of these, the recommendations algorithm kicks into gear. Into gear. Without much effort, you can immerse yourself into a sea of conspiracies, everything from outlandish looks at aliens to mainstream films about our food system. Despite tonal variations, some are tongue-in-cheek, in others deadly serious. All of them share the same narrative structure. They depict fairy tale worlds of good and evil, populated exclusively by noble hills, heroes, and black-hated villains. None attempt to portray dissenting perspectives except in caricature or flimsy foils. Unsurprisingly, the positive user comments are uncannily similar, as if described from Jones' private diary, a zombie horde of enlightened viewers complaining in unison that the rest of humanity has been brainwashed by big insert villain here, any kind of villain. Although Amazon is by far worse by far the worst offender, other streaming services are also part of the problem. In a terrific call to arms for The Ringer in 2017, Kate Knibbs pointed out that Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu offer a selection of wide-eyed September 11, 2001 conspiracy films from the Zeitgeist trilogy to the more recent A Conspiracy of Lies, Flight 370 to 9-11, The New World Order and Aliens, classified as documentaries. They appropriate the authority of legitimate films like Ken Burns documentaries that show up to next to them from Nibs, there's a clear solution. These companies all acquire distribution rights to films and then bundle them together in streaming packages. Unlike Facebook and Google, they have always stressed the ideas of 
creation and gatekeeping, highlighting their sophisticated recommendation services, which are meant to separate high-quality film and television from the junk. They are proud abriators and sorters of content. There is no reason they could not reclassify and properly label 9 11 conspiracy documentaries as paranoid camp. Part of me is completely on board. That part wants to implore you to call out erigious offenders on social media and contact extreme services to demand a better system like Facebook and Google. These companies shouldn't be allowed to profit as gatekeepers without taking responsibility for what gets through the gates. After all, as Nibs argues, they already restrict pornography, so that's not a question. And whatever the set to censor, but rather what? And it's not a question of whether to censor, but rather what to censor, sorry. But another part of me thinks that this approach is a band-aid solution that could distract from broader issues and might even make things worth worse, like conspiracy theories themselves, forcing exclusively on the platform's exploits the human tendency to blame collective suffering on a single malevolent aid agent. Unfortunately, most societal problems are emergent properties of complex systems composed of many agents with many different vulnerabilities. This means solutions are necessarily complicated and multifaceted, and require mobilization on multiple fronts. In an important sense, the public and our government control the streaming services. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos doesn't think pornography is more dangerous than conspiracies. The public does. He's a pawn in the hands of the market and cultural forces. If we don't address our own complicity in the pro proliferation of these rhetorical viruses, new ones will emerge organically, and the next generation of Joneses will turn their predecessors' exile into martyrdom. Ultimately, demand for conspiracy theories is a symptom of our inability to face the world's imperfections. It's extensively, existentially taxing to recognize that the systems we inhabit are inherently flawed and not fully controlled by anyone. Better instead to postulate systems that are perfect or would be if hidebound traditionalist and corrupt leaders got out of the way. In a strange paradox, these stories about powerful puppeteers are really about empowerment. The political scientist Joseph Parent has called them emotional politics or poltrix, a, a mean of a means of coping with painful circumstances outside of one's control. That's why they are especially attracted to people trapped in poverty, to people in prisons, to someone like Jones, for whom the world itself feels like a prison planet. This is the most apparent when the conspiracy theory isn't tied up with a hot-button social political issue. Take Patent 17, which is on Netflix and available for rental or purchase on Amazon Video, a documentary about a surgeon who removes teeny alien-installed implants from his patients. The film opens from a voiceover from director Jeremy Kenyon Lockyer. Who are we, he intones. Are we alone? Or is the answer simply stranger than we think? Suddenly, viewers feel as if the resolution of it existential questions might be one incredible secret away. It's not that there aren't answers, it's that the answers are too crazy for most people to handle, so they get suppressed. Or in Lockyer's candid description, I seek to weaponize your curiosity, and if you're already to suspend your own produce, welcome to the world of extraordinary beliefs. Understanding conspiracy theories is this way makes sense of the anti-elitism running through them, which lasts out at standard forms of knowledge production that fail to provide complete physical and existential security. The, their shrill ap apocalyptic rhetoric, see the first paragraph of this piece, taps into uh, deep insecurities, taking a just asking question stance, as many do he heightens to the effect by setting up an implied contrast between the film's earnest truth seeking and the elites who can't be bothered with it. What if the history you were taught in school was all a lie, suggests the narrative of Unsealed Conspiracy Files on Netflix in its opening episode. If we are headed towards an apocalypse that our government knows about, what can we do what can you do to save yourself and in the space of ten seconds? He threatens da dam damnation and promises salvation obtainable through nothing more than rejecting authority. Has traditional science been able to explain why the pyramids were built? Asked Carmen Wolter, a host of the Pyramid Code, a conspiracy-style Netflix series that reveals the truth about 
ancient Egyptians? The answer, of course, is no. Traditional signs of eggs stand in for academic authority, right? Large is woolly, monopic. But fear not, Voltaire has the real answers. They don't want you to know, but it turns out ancient Egyptian, rightly understood, holds the key to solving all society's ills. And then there's Jessa Ventura, ex-governor of Minnesota and former host of Conspiracy Theory Season 2, Episode 1, is about global warming. Ventura grimly, there's more to this global warming than what our media and our government and everything is telling us. That our power, money, control. These rhetorical tactics, mind viruses, if if you will, flourish in mainstream films that would never and should never be candidates for censorship. Cowspiracy and what the hell are two popular vegan advocacy films on Netflix that propose controversial theories about global warming and diet-related disease, respectively arguing that 51% of global greenhouse emissions come from animal agriculture and eating eggs is as bad as smoking cigarettes. Both claims rigorously misrepresent mainstream scientific consensus, a consensus, it should be noted, that includes scientists who are gravely concerned about the negative impacts of meat. But once you've been infected, the rebuttals won't matter. We know where they come from. Big meat has everyone in their pockets, even the environmental groups. To weaponize curiosity, as Lockyer put it, all you have to do is expose people to weaponize narratives. Stories designed to bypass our critical thinking faculties, or faculties, by satisfying our need for clarity, simplicity, and existential certainty at Arizona State University, Center of the Future of War, we have identified weaponized narrative as one of the greatest threats to national security and global stability. Disclosure, ASU is a partner with the Slate New America and Future Tense, ISIS propaganda, ISIS propaganda, and Russian disinformation use the same archetypes and plot lines as a vaxxed endgame and cowspiracy. Censorship can only deal with the most blatant offenders on the high profile platforms, and it runs the serious risk of reinforcing the truth of the underlying narrative. It really is what they don't want you to know. To secure ourselves, we need a massive movement, a bipartisan effort to immunize the public against the arch typical engine of weaponized narrative, like the problem itself. Our solution must be systematic. In addition to asking for top-down help from streaming services, I can think of three good places to start. Beginning in middle school, children should be trained to understand manipulative rhetoric, and it should continue to be a central feature of humanity's education at all levels. The fact that millions of people can see the title Cowspiracy and think, wow, seems legit, is an indictment of our educational system, an indictment. <clears throat> As a public, we must embrace and celebrate the virtue of questioning our, our own most deeply held narratives. Confirmation bias is widely recognized as a distorting force in people's thinking, and there is no way to eliminate it completely. But like any form of bias, we can per pursue strategies for mitigating it. Psychological research has revealed some promising practices that should be attractively implemented by schools and individuals alike. Activists should refrain from an ends justify the means approach to weaponized narratives. Cartoon villains and simplified casualty follow the money may be effective in the short term, but only at the cost of throwing corrosive acid on our collective critical thinking abilities. Telling a more complicated story doesn't let evil off the hook. It helps us identify it more accurately. The streaming platforms can help, but their approach needs to go beyond censorship and fact-checking like Facebook's disputed tag, which predictively served only to reinforce people's worldviews due to something known as a backfire effect. These are incredibly powerful companies that produce original movies and television series. Like... I'd like to see them produce high-quality content focused on developing our critical thinking abilities. Instead of a series about current conspiracies, a series about the history of failed ones, distant enough for viewers that they won't feel threatened, instead of a documentary about aliens, a documentary that spores why believing in aliens is so tempting, a gripping pr premiere on weaponized narrative, through an inside look at terrorists and totalitarians, and then... After someone watches Zeitgeist, the, the algorithm should serve up on Al Amazon Original that explores how Hitler used the protocols of the elders of Zion to manipulate German citizens the vaccine along the virus. In a country badly comp 
compromised by conspiracy theories and fake news, it's hard to understand why these political si solutions haven't already been implemented, or is it? What if elites actually want to keep us captivated by insane stories, distracted by nonsense, and empowered by idiocy, while they continue to accumulate political and financial power? What if that's why they call for cuts to the humanitarian human human entities and demonize hardworking educators and journalists who stand in the way of their new world order? So there you have it. Consider liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Que mo sabe out. We'll see you in the next one. Pretty interesting one about all this conspiracy stuff. So uh, weaponizing narrative. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Kimasabi out.